What do the rich buy that the pool don't even know is available for purchase? Private boarding gate at certain airports. Complete with showers, a spa, full bar, lounge, food, a bed, gym, sauna etc. Total privacy. Your luggage is scanned and taken through security by a concierge, and you're driven to the plane in a BMW 8 series. LAX has them now. Hello. Yes. I would like to order some wealthiness just so I can have access to the private boarding gate. Yes. I'll hold. Thank you. Edited to add. Shut up, you guys. I'm on the phone, and thanks for the silver and the chuckles. Fran, this guy doesn't even have enough money to have someone else call for him. Just leave him on hold for an hour. Yeah, but then when you get on the plane you're still stuck in the cattle car of first class with all the other plebeians. The animals in the back are even still breathing the same air as you. Clearly a private jet is the only civilized way to travel. Everyone knows about mega yachts, but the very rich also enjoy their own trains. Or at the very least private super luxurious train cars. With their budgets it isn't expensive to rent space on freight lines and an engine, assuming they don't own their own. Sometimes a group of friends will hook their private cars together and motor around a continent having a big party. Now I am imagining some fat cat in his luxury train car between a bunch of loads of coal and some hobos in an empty box car. Pet cloning. Ex-boss was getting his dog cloned for $100,000. Oh, I've heard of this. There's a company in Texas that does it kinda regularly apparently now. $25,000 for a cat. $50,000 for a dog. It's something like a $1-2k deposit just for them to send your vet the kit to obtain bio samples and to store the material. You pay the rest of it whenever you're ready to clone your critter. See I just don't get this. Had a friend whose super wealthy parents did this, guess what? Different temperament and everything, because it's still its own animal. They thought they were getting another one of their precious snuggle baby and this one hates to snuggle and gets into everything mischievous. No thanks. It'll always adopt. Best dogs I've ever had have been adoptions. Specialized household staff. When someone is truly mega rich, running their household takes the same complexity as running a small to mid-size company, and management is skilled and compensated accordingly. Don't think butler. Think head of operations at a luxury hotel. The staff that household managers oversee can be really specialized as well. For example, Larry Ellison has his own personal curator to oversee his collection of Asian art. They do things like advise on the purchase and sale of arts in his collection, oversee storage and display of art housed on his property, oversee process of lending art for storage and display at museums. The curator will often have their own staff to conduct actual conservation work, art transport, art installation, etc. So if you've already got an in-house crew of 7 people focused on your art collection alone, imagine how big your entire household staff is. That's why you've got a household manager. Just here to say this is very accurate and I have done consultation work for someone in this position in Canada. The home had more contemporary art per square inch than the MoMA. I asked the woman who ran the household if she had a favorite work from the very impressive collection. She told me deadpan, oh no. I hate contemporary art. One of my friends comes from a super wealthy family. We stopped by her parents house and of course it's a mansion with a full staff. The lead maid took one look at me and guessed my size. From there she laid out several outfits that had been bought, but not worn for me to take home. It was surreal. A well trained staffer can do that, they specialize in dressing and grooming. They are there to make the home and head of household perfect. Something they do that most people don't know about is buy entire libraries at once. My sister used to work at a bookstore, and told me someone came in, and wanted to furnish their library with a library size purchase of books. They just wanted cherry picked best sellers left to the discretion of the people working there. It sounded wild. Some wealthy people also buy books as decoration, with no intent of reading most of them. They buy books from wholesalers by the linear foot, specifying how the books look on the shelves, size, color, material of spine, etc, without any regard for what the books actually are. 
They just need to fill wall space in Librarius old fist rooms in their homes. Hey, boss. How many different harem themed manga can we order? Landing 747s in small airports. I grew up around Lexington. KY. The region is huge on horses. Particularly thoroughbred horses. The entire city is surrounded by horse farms. And these farms breed some of the best racing horses in the world. The rich and famous will often come here to buy thoroughbreds to add to their breeding stock. One such person is a sheik from Dubai, I think, who owns his own private 747. Now the local airport isn't rated for 747s, and it's not legal to land one there unless it's an emergency. The sheik doesn't care though and lands his 747 there anyways. The airport finds him every time he does this, which he is totally fine with paying. I've been told that many of the upgrades to the airport over the years were almost entirely funded with money from those fines. In London rich people figured out it was cheaper to just park on the streets illegally and just pay the fines every day than to pay for parking in the city. So the city started clamping cars, so the rich people started paying people to go and pay the fine for the car to be unclamped before they wanted to leave. I've heard that now, in response to this. The police have changed their policy for certain parking spots. Instead of just booting the car, they'll have it towed right away, um, and then scrapped. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. Slam bam boom, away to the scrap yard. The rich people in London have started to take those no parking zones a bit more seriously after that. Even if they could afford to buy a new car every week. It means that they'd be out a car the moment they set food back outside. And then scrapped. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Slam bam boom. Away to the scrap yard. That sounds hilariously illegal, but I honestly don't know enough about UK, London law to assert that position. Now they don't scrap expensive cars. They auction them off. I had a buddy in Toronto whose job was to collect rich people's cars and impound them. Probably 20% are never picked up and do get scrapped, but knowing that he's not the only guy doing this and that he's a crooked bastard he just throws them on his brother's car carrier and sells them off in New York. Did it for probably 12 years before someone came looking for a car he had illegally sold and he just shut down everything and walked away. Don't think anything ever came back to him. Entire floors of hotels or multiple floors. Entire restaurants. Chefs from literally any restaurant in the world to cook for them, wherever they are. I saw all of those things done by a prince of Saudi Arabia. We estimated it cost him $50,000 just for the one private meal in our restaurant, given that he had the top four floors of our hotel booked for the hundreds of staff to take care of him, his wife and his two kids, plus likely some concubines, if I'm being honest. As someone in this part of the world, being rich equals the number of people who work for you. He paid $30,000 just to close our restaurant for one meal. Flew his favorite chef from New York to Orlando to cook for him, on his private jet, and then back again. Of course, it was likely the other private jet he had just for his staff, not for himself or his family. Make food our entire staff, all the kitchen staff, all the federal, state and local security and him his wife and his two kids. I have posted the entire story somewhere else in the past, but I couldn't find it easily. I had a buddy who taught ski lessons to another Saudi prince's little kid and had some nearly unbelievable and yet similar details during his interactions with them. That kid had an entire team around him or probably 10 staff, plus vehicles, snowmobiles, a helicopter, and so on. I later met a guy who worked on an ultra-luxury 300-foot yacht and served Bill Gates and his wife, among other super-rich people. Their primary job was to operate without interacting with them, or at least as little as possible. This shows you, in some sense, that having people around you doing stuff you need to be done, but doing it invisibly is another perk of being rich. One private meal in our restaurant. Flew his favorite chef from New York to Orlando to cook for him. What the hell did he go to the restaurant for? The environment, decor slash atmosphere of that restaurant, probably. 
and convenience of being able to have the meal he want in supposedly the town city he was in for either work or pleasure. A billionaire spending $50,000 a night, every day of the week, for an entire year, is about the same ratio as a guy with $1,000 in the bank spending $18 over the course of a year, or 20-ish cents a night. This is what brought this into perspective for me, 